Hello Mechatronic students, Andrew Dowlin here and in this video we're going to be talking about uh, creating an actual sequence of events using this rotary pick and place mechanism that's on the PLC trainer. So uh, in a previous video I demonstrated a very simple structure of creating a sequence of events, one step to the next step to the next step. Now we're going to incorporate actual inputs and outputs from the PLC and demonstrate how we can create a sequence of events to control the actions of this rotary actuator and uh, put that into uh, motion here. So it builds off of that same format in terms of the sequence of events and operation. Uh, for reference for you guys, I do have a um, PDF document that we can use to create your program from. So you can reference this and um, it has all of the logic for you to reference to create and you can still see from again previous steps it's using that step one and instead of like step one generic conditions this is saying oh wait for that sensor to be in a particular position before it starts so let's get into uh, a little bit of a description of what we're shooting for on the PLC trainer Okay, I had to change the camera angle for this to demonstrate, but I've got a better shot of the rotary actuator mechanism here. And we can see we've got uh, a rotary device here. That's the actual actuator that makes it rotate with compressed air. And then there's a cylinder that goes uh, up and down and a gripper that goes opened and closed. And you guys can see that there are sensors built into uh, the end of travel for the cylinder up and down. There is a sensor for gripper open, gripper closed. And there's sensors here for rotary, uh, I call this one rotary front. And then the other sensor is for rotary back. So when these are uh, energized with the solenoid valves, um, the, the different pneumatic components will move around. So let's take a look at our program and begin look, uh, uh, basically dissecting this. So the first line of the program is just like we've had before, where we've got a green push, uh, basically a run coil is what we're shooting for here. And if I go ahead and download this program, we're going to have the green push button when pressed will energize the run coil, the run instruction. And um, we're going to begin this program using your um, trainer template that you had created prior in the hardware course. And that template uh, is going to have all of the tags that are defined in here. So if we went to our controller tags, these are already set up in that PLC template uh, where we can see like our various inputs uh, and outputs and they've been associated with the um, particular input and output. So we want to begin with that uh, and then just open up your template and then do a file save as and give it a name of something like, um, this is called Rotary Pick and Place, okay? So let's go back to um, our code, our ladder logic, and take a look at this. So again, you'll have uh, in D2L be able to locate the uh, PDF file that shows this logic, but I do want you to assemble it so that we get good at um, working with the ladder logic um, bringing in your examine on, examine off, and output energized bits into the program and building it out. So um, we're in debugging mode here, we're ready to go. So the first line is going to put this into run mode. So if I were to energize and push the green push button and let go of it, you can see that the run is energized. And if we look at the, uh, the rest of the ladder logic, you'll see run is built in so it's the first line of every rung thereafter. So if run were to stop, in this case by pressing the E stop, 
or if we reach the end of the cycle, we uh, are no longer in run mode. So I'm going to go um, demonstrate that again. We've pressed the green push button. We're in run mode. And now the first thing we're doing is waiting for uh, on line uh, rung number one. We're waiting for this rotary front um, sensor to be made. So back here, I have the air disconnected for good reason, but there's a sensor that lets us know uh, this is the rotary in the front position. And um, when it triggers, there's the sensor, boom. So that was the condition that we needed to see in order for the program to proceed with step number one. So I've got wrong comments that are in here and those are very useful and I want you to put those in there as well. You can always right click on the rungs and then edit the rung comment. And my comment for this particular rung was if, if the rotary front sensor is on, turn on the rotary clockwise solenoid in step number one. Okay, so that comment is there. I just want to show you how you can put them in. Okay, so that sensor has to be made. Once the sensor is made, we can latch on step number one. So it latches itself on, and even if the sensor turns off, that's uh, staying on. Now, how does it energize the rotary clockwise solenoid? Well, to see that, we have to go way down to the bottom of the program. Okay, here's what's called the output section. Uh, we only want to use an output a single time in our program. And if we do have multiple events that would need to turn on an output, such as this cylinder up solenoid, then we would have branch instructions, parallel instructions, that would allow it to turn on. So as you guys can see here, if step number one is on and step number five is not on, we'll get to that later, then this particular solenoid is going to energize. So that's hooked up to um, the valve that's going to shift the air, compressed air, and make the rotary actuator turn. Now I've got the air disconnected for this because it's, it's nice. I can show you in slow motion what's happening. Okay. So back to our me mechanism here. If that rotary uh, clockwise solenoid is on, this whole mechanism should be rotating over here. And it then would uh, register a sensor. It says, oh, that's what's um, the sensor for the next step. So let's take a look at the program here. The step one should turn on that rotary actuator. Step one happened, we're still in run mode. And now we're waiting for um, sensor input number 10 here, which is the rotary back proximity. So this sensor 10 uh, on the device here, once that sensor is made, and I think my camera angle covers it up, so it's not a, a good shot. But uh, once that's made, we can proceed to step number two. And I hear a little click. Um, it did make that sensor, and back to our program here. We told it to rotate. The sensor verified that it reached its destination, and that energized step two. In my comments, it says step two. If the rotary sensor is in the back position, which it is, um, then proceed to step number two, lowering the cylinder. So step two is set here, and how it actually lowers the cylinder is going to be in the output section. So lower the cylinder, cylinder down. If step two is on and step four is not on, uh, lower the cylinder. That's gonna be um, on the device the solenoid will actually cause this cylinder to um, proceed down and the actually stepped ahead of you a little bit. If the cylinder got lowered, step one, step two, looks like step three got energized, okay? Because that cylinder down sensor was made step three. Step three, if the cylinder is down, uh, proceed to step number three, uh, close the gripper. Okay, so step three 
in our output section at the very end of the program here should be close the gripper. So step number three, if step three is on and step six is not on, close that gripper. All right, let's go back up to step number three and see what's going to happen next. So we're still in run mode. Step three happened. It told it to close the gripper it, with that output turning on. And gripper closed is uh, input number 15. So when that um, input 15 is made, it would proceed to step number four. And hopefully you're seeing the, the basic logic here with step by step. So I'm going to close the gripper and you'll see step four energize. Okay, so the gripper got closed. Oh, it's not a great camera angle down there. Yeah, I, I had to physically open and close that gripper. Oh, and then of course I move things. Um, <laughs> so we close the gripper. That's been made and step four happened. And then um, I actually moved the cylinder up already. So we proceeded to step number five. And step number five is telling that rotary actuator to go uh, counterclockwise. Let's take a look at step five in the output section. Step five down here, um, counterclockwise for the rotary actuator, that valve is on. And interesting thing, step five does two things in the outputs. It tells the rotary to go counterclockwise, but it also breaks the uh, instruction that was telling it to go clockwise. So this utilizes a uh, two solenoid, a double solenoid valve, one to make it go in one direction, uh, the other solenoid makes it travel the opposite direction. So I had to break the other um, solenoid, that output, with the step five so that we can't be telling the rotary actuator to go clockwise and counterclockwise at the same time. That won't work. So step five broke the uh, step one instruction that said, hey, make it go um, clockwise. So now we should be solely going counterclockwise, okay, in step number five. And you can see step five, it's now waiting for it to get back to the front position before it can proceed to step number six. So if we rotate this guy all the way around, right, I'm traveling back, and once the sensor has been made, okay, boom. The uh, input has been made there in the program. There's our, our step six conditions have been satisfied. And our next step is to open the gripper and then end the program. So if that sensor for the gripper open, you know, the, the gripper has been told to open. So I guess I, I'll go back to that for a second. Down in the output section, the gripper has been told to open. And that's kind of interesting because how we open the gripper is to simply stop it. Step six, the only place it's used here is to break the gripper close instruction that was in step three. Okay. So once the gripper opens, the end of the program has been reached and you'll see our run instruction unlatching. So boom, we are no longer in run mode. The end instruction was actuated for just a tiny bit on uh, the debugging screen here. We don't see it because it happened so quick, but now the end instruction uh, went off in step six. Once that gripper was home, it broke the run instruction and we can start all over again. All right, now we're gonna demonstrate how this works with compressed air hooked up to it. All right, we've got the compressed air going and um, I'll get a nice shot here of the rotary actuator. So um, when we press the green push button, it kicks it into run mode. The rotary actuator comes over. It meets uh, sensor number 10. That cylinder goes up and down. This happens so quick. So it's hard to talk or, or uh, give a play-by-play -play, uh, because it's going so rapidly. 
but that's a neat complete sequence here where it would go imagine it coming over here picking up a part and then swinging back and releasing that part so I'll give it another go here and I'll have you guys experiment with it once you get it up and running closes the gripper picks it up brings it over sets it down um, now the neat thing is if we were to press the uh, the the stop button mid cycle um, it will not proceed to the next step we've kicked it out of run mode so I've uh, hit the emergency stop button and we're out of run mode and all action has come to a stop so to fix that I'd pull the e-stop back out hit the run button and now as you guys can see um, it's waiting what's it waiting for right here we're in run mode but that front sensor is not on so uh, I had to create a little bit of a condition because it uh, in this case it got stopped when it was back here well for it to start it needs to have the other sensor made so we're in run mode and it's sitting there waiting for this sensor to be made so um, I added an, a, a, a selector switch down at the bottom that can also turn on some of those instructions that would need to be like the rotary actuator should be counterclockwise in its front position and the cylinder should be in its up position before we start so if I energize selector switch 104 it would cause the rotary actuator to go back to that start position and then things can resume as they should so now we're back in here it's running in its uh, cycle so um, there you go guys that is a uh, basic sequence step by step by step and we're gonna add some other features to this with uh, some timers and counters to create additional conditions that would make this operate a little bit more predictably uh, one of the things you'll notice is that there's a bit of slop in those sensors and it's still moving before this arm comes down as an example so a lot of times we'll have to program in a short timer that says okay swing back make your sensor and then wait just a, a few um, milliseconds you know sometimes it's a fraction of a second uh, for it to get back to its position and that makes the motion appear cleaner and we make sure that it's you know we told to close the gripper you don't want to have it closing while it's retracting we would perhaps miss the object we're trying to pick up so a lot of times we'll have timers that are incorporated into our program that make the motion more predictable uh, and accurate so until next time uh, we'll talk to you guys later this uh, again just I want you to grab that PDF document and create this logic, get this functioning, demonstrate it, and then we can talk about some next steps with adding timers to make the action a little bit more predictable and accurate. So, till next time, catch you later.